welcome to the Dude Show Podcast, starring Patrick and Chris, with updates from our sexy bosom bless news girl and commentary from producer Lewis. Clothing is optional for this broadcast, so grab yourself a whatever, sit back, and prepare to eat pie like you're on death row, you son of a bitch. And without further ado, let's fire this motherfucker up. Yeah! Wow. Yeah! I am so happy to be here tonight with all of you, with my friends, mm. with past lovers. <laughs> no, you, you and Mikey no. have something you'd like to share? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Good day, Bethany. Hi. How do you do there, de- de- Chris? I'm doing well, Patrick. My- uh, Mikey, good to see you, pal. Tell Lewis about how much gum I've put under his fucking uh, chair. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a All lot right. of gum. All right, Shout out to Lewis. Shout out to Lewis. All right. Look, guys, I have a conundrum, a life issue. And mm. whenever I come to one of these things where I'm like, I've been thinking all day about a problem, I, th- I say, I can't wait till I get the team at the table oh, so they yeah. can help me get through this. Lay it on Troubled us. waters. Okay? The brain trust. If you will. <clears throat> so, uh, as you know, I've been dating a little lady okay. whose name <laughs> shall, rem- shall remain nameless. Wow, the giggle's so <laughs> early in this no, show. No, no. She, who, ha- I she who has no name. Yeah, no, I don't like to use names with, uh, with the X's. Right. Uh, or the newbies. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. Yes, yes, yes. Freudian yes. slip. All right, so me and the little lady, uh, we'll call her Miss X. Uh, we Ugh. were watching a show last night called Bad Girls Club, which I love that show. It's one of, it's, you know, when, when you start dating someone, you find shows you like to watch with each other. Oh, it's sweet. And, oh. and ours is Bad Girls Club. Have it's you cute. seen the show? Yeah, that's... I think so. Nope. Oh, it's a, Don't it, they prank each other? Uh, the, the premise of the show is let's get a bunch of, uh, Are they a bunch pl- of sluts and whores in a uh, house <laughs> together. Are they plus size women? Hood nope. Bitches. Then I haven't watched it. No, no, no. Uh-oh. Predominantly, uh, uh, <laughs> what did you say, Mikey? I said there's some hood bitches. All right. What wow. does wow. that wow. mean? It means Mikey's saying uh, there's some uh, women of, uh, of color that are involved. in. No. in as, you as can be as hood as you show. want. No colors involved. So yeah. we enjoy watching this show. But like pretty much for an hour, it's just girls doing uh, they're drinking excessively. They're sleeping with random dudes. They're they're partying and they're punching each other. They're vomiting. They're um Lighting each other on fire. It's crazy. <laughs> it's called bad. It's like season six. Basically I, I us know. after the podcast every week. Yep. Yep. Yeah, all right. Yep. And so uh, we watched this show. So last night we're watching the show. And as you know, when you watch TV, it can spur on conversation or vigorous debate. True. You watch a show mm-hmm. and uh, you can say, <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? All right. So what I mean by that is last night we were watching it and all this crazy shit's going down. And uh, she turned to me and she said, um, Wow, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Oh, so we so we got in this discussion of like, Ooh. have you ever no. chewed and screwed at a uh, Chinese restaurant? Have you ever stolen a car? Ever getting arrested? Ever drive home drunk? All this other stuff, and uh, so we, we start talking about we're having a great old time. You kind of uh, me just reminiscing from the past, all my crazy yeah. stories. But uh, <laughs> at some point, subject matter turns to sex, and she says, "What's the you know what's the." Uh, Craziest, no. you know, sexual thing you've ever done. Oh, <laughs> now I don't. I you, see you guys looking at me. You right were not now. truthful, were you? Well, hold, hold on. There, okay, Chris. I, right, I, dude, I, we got an hour to kill. Here. We we do. Right. I, I I'm a little frightened for you, buddy. No, no, no. I uh, I deflected this question. <laughs> nice, because I know better. Oh. Getting on my getting on in my years, I, I know that there's nothing to gain from being honest by answering this question. God, no. sure. I'd like to brag about my. Uh, my sexual espo- uh, uh, exploits. Exploits, yes. Now, Chris, you and I have been friends with each other for the better part of a, a decade. True. You can attest to s- my debauchery. I can. Okay, I've done uh, some crazy things. I think I've witnessed some debauchery. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been a lot around that <laughs> but long. She <laughs> does not need to be made aware of any of these uh, events. No. no. Certainly not. No. Okay, because uh, God forbid... Her and I are a couple, a few, de- f- still a couple, few years down the road. I will pay for this every goddamn day. Yeah. Oh, if I oh, if I course. said, hey, I was involved in a gangbang, you know what I mean? Uh, I'll never be let out of the house again. 
I'll be I reminded don't of it. Think that's uh, hold on, I've dated no. women, okay? No. <laughs> and and I know how this goes down. So uh, of course I deflected the question. Now, uh, the other side of the coin, though, I don't want to know the craziest sexual thing that she's ever done. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And and I have a little story about that. Oh. Uh, at one point, a little mm-hmm. lady who shall remain nameless, a girl that I dated uh, lady X. some some years ago. Uh, we were driving down to the Long Beach Aquarium, mm. and we're gonna have a great day. We just had lunch. I was kind of into this girl. Lunch. We'd been dating for <laughs> yeah. Too. You love sandwiches and sure. finger foods. We we were we were driving down Long Beach after a, a delightful lunch, and uh, I I remember this being unsolicited on my part. As we're driving down, she uh, said, "Wow, it's really nice to meet you. Before I met you, things were getting out of hand." I was like, yeah. oh, "Wow, that's crazy." Whoa. And she said, uh, "Yeah, I got." Double teamed by two Mexicans the week before I met you. Oh no! Oh, really? Right. Escalated quickly. Now, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Dude. Now, as we uh, we were pulling into the Long Beach uh, <laughs> Aquarium parking lot, this hit me like a like a what Jeez. do you call it? A load hit, of hit, hit you like a fucking mackerel right in the face. Like mackerel. a whoosh, you got yeah. fish mackerel. slapped. It was a mackerel. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say some bricks or yeah, but yeah, mackerel. mackerel. Stay with the it aquarium stink theme. Too. All right. So as we're walking around looking at fish all day. I couldn't get that goddamn image out of my head. <laughs> it stuck in me. It tortured me. She said it just like that. Like she did. I think some she needed, Mexican. I I honestly think that she needed to, I don't know, get something off her chest. Evidently. So, mm. but I played it cool. I didn't bring it up. But of course, I was obsessing on this morning, noon, and night. Yeah. Every time I hung out with her, I mm. when I looked at her, I I yeah. saw her. Getting double teamed, yeah. no. obsessed with this image, and and it hurt the relationship. Oh, for sure. So I confided in a friend, mm. one Chris McRitchie, who's <laughs> sitting across from me at the oh, table right now. Uh, okay. And I, uh, I was looking for some kind of, I don't know, um, <laughs> compassionate wisdom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That that yeah. would be the words. Yeah. And uh, I said, Hey, Chris, I got to tell you. I don't know if you, this is our, you know, ever dated a girl that told you this or anything. And uh, so um, uh, this little lady that I'm dating, uh, we were driving down uh, to see some fish, and she um, told me that she got double teamed by two guys. Waiting to feel better about the situation, Chris answered this story by saying, did she take it rotisserie style? <laughs> oh, that doesn't help the mental image. <laughs> Not at all. You you son of a bitch. That was a ter- that was not that helpful. Was a terrible because thing. That, to I hadn't say. thought of her sucking a guy's dick and then take it from behind <laughs> until he put that goddamn what were image you thinking? into my fucking head, you bastard. Do you remember doing this to me, you son of a God, bitch? Do I remember I don't remember last week. I couldn't I believe you really did that to me. <laughs> Mikey, I see you over there. What do you want? What are you gonna say? You ever had a girlfriend that got rotisserie styled, so <laughs> says Chris. Ret- like like Chinese finger cuffs. She no. got finger cuffs. Bastard. So anyway, <laughs> that what, relation. What were you envisioning? I was seeing. I already told you. I was. She was getting done from behind and giving a guy a blowjob. No, but before that, why were you surprised? How I figured did you one s- guy had his way with her. Then uh, oh, another I guy see. took. Then another Just guy. Just one came. right after another. One, not at the same time. It's not at the same got time. It. But then he oh. gave me that horrific. <laughs> <laughs> image of that happening yeah and every time mm. i looked at her she i kid. saw this so when <laughs> the girl i'm dating now brought that question up oh i said eh, i've never done anything that crazy but really i have and really i don't want to hear you tell me your <laughs> crazy story after i admit mine right right boy that escalated quickly once again Sure did. I well, I was mean... hoping it didn't. <laughs> so, what I present to the team tonight? What do you, what do you got? Is a question. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is it okay to deny, deflect, or even lie to a present partner about your sexual past for the sake of keeping that relationship uh, going good? Okay, are you ready for this? I may get like all super therapy on it. All right. Please. I need help. Okay. I just feel like if you, I would like a man to tell me his like sexual past because it doesn't really bother me. So you could tell her and then just say, you know, I don't really want to hear about what's happening with you. Just tell her. Um, 
What, what, what's, I told you, there's nothing to gain from that. Uh, you will use that like a... Uh, okay, you, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me take it from here. Uh, Bethany, in the words of Larry Graham, your one in a million <laughs> chance of a lifetime. Um, you're one of the few girls that doesn't mind hearing about somebody's sexual past. Okay. I, progressive, I would rather... You're, you no, are progressive. No, you're yes. progressive. Yes. You're progressive. I think you can handle it. I, right. I've known you. You can handle it. Um, I kind of like it. I kind of, you know, like we're like human beings, right? I like to like know you're like shit. It doesn't mm. bother me. And I think Erroneous. in a little way. Erroneous. Oh, wow. I think Man. in a little way, Bethany probably gets some sexual, derives some sexual I would enjoyment rather, out of this. I mean, no, I would rather, you know, no. Well, tell me, have you ever had this discussion with a boyfriend? Yeah. And I knew a lot of stuff. And I think I kind of assumed there's a lot of stuff. So I would, you know, not right away, but like in, like eventually, I would like to know someone's, like all their shit. All right. Well, tell me what, uh, you're dating somebody. What did he tell you? <laughs> what did he tell me? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've had boyfriends that have been strippers mm -hmm. or other things like that. And that's you know. kind of a hard thing to like, you know, think about. No pun intended. But I'm but, glad but I like, knew. But like, tell me the that most horrific a story a guy you're dating has ever told you. No way! I no. can't say that. But wait a minute, you're progressive, right? Right, but and I wouldn't want to tell their shit. That no one, there's no names being said here. Well, I mean, there's totally, there's been threesomes and all that kind of stuff. I would like to hear that. Kind. You, all right, if if in fact a ex has told you, and I mean, this is my sexy voice, that he was involved in a threesome, and we don't know two guys. Oh, or? I have. Yeah, I mean, yeah. On him. Yeah, it. I I've heard Gosh. that, and okay. I'm fine with it. Do you, when you're sleeping with him, did it sexually arouse you? Oh, no, I'm not going to talk about that. No? No. Okay. Oh, fine. The crowd's not happy with that. Yeah, none of us are, Bethany. Sorry, man. Can't help it. Bethany, <laughs> come on. Got to give a little something here. Okay, what do you want from me? I want to know a crazy story that you've heard from a boyfriend that you were probably I pleasing don't... yourself to. Is it? Oh, that I, that I enjoy? Yes. I mean, I don't think that I see it like that, like one particular story that made me hot. I just like that I would know something about someone. To get to know much. him. Yeah. Kind of like what his favorite color is. Yeah, it's part of him. It's bullshit. Chris, please. You want me to bring this home? Yeah. Well, not bring it home, but come on. T help. Am I crazy? Okay. I feel like you guys are, I'm not like crazy. Like I said, you're, you're a rare breed. Um, my thought and my experiences with, it, with this is that what happens before you're with that person happened before that business. And quite frankly, it's none of their business. I agree. And it's, it can only can only stir up ill feelings. It can only create tension and bad vibes. I've seen what if they killed someone before they met you? Should they I'm, not share that? I'm talking sex. I'm not talking. I'm not talking. I'm not, I'm not, talk, I'm not talking <laughs> no. felonies. I'm not uh, talking. Right. Okay. But I'm saying it would be fine for her for you to tell her also. Like, I really am not that into talking about that. I think the past is the past. Yeah. And that, I just don't really feel like doing that. And I think if you were fine with that and so is she then who fucking cares maybe she feels the same way maybe she doesn't really sometimes i think you get into asking questions with people that you're with and then you're like i didn't really want to you know i don't so. know i think this was a pointed question i think she was sizing me up as boyfriend material at this point and uh maybe that line of questioning was to i don't know uh try and you know See if I yeah. see if be, the, be the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you think she wants a guy that's not sexually experienced? Yeah. No, she wants somebody that's going to be totally open and honest with her. We can share everything, Patrick. Right. You know. You know what? There's some shit that does not need to be shared. I agree. I agree. Can I agree. of worms. Let's well, go fishing. I got a can of worms and well, it's open. I'll just I say agree. it now. I have been involved in a threesome. Oh. Yeah. Many people have. I don't think many people. The devil. No. <laughs> Mikey, you ever been in, involved in a threesome? Only with the internet. Okay. Uh, hey, now. All right. Well, I uh, so I guess our answers here are, should we lie, deny, or uh, be vague? And Bethany would say no. I would say tell them you don't want to talk about it or fucking talk about it. Mm-hmm. Chris, your take on this is... Uh, I say what happens before whatever current relationship you're in is your business and not that person's business. And it can only lead to trouble. All right. Well, before we end this or book end it, I, Chris, I will put a scenario out there. Please. To you. Yes. Um, I like work. All right. Uh, what if you found out the girl you're dating uh, 
apparently he took it rotisserie style. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure some of the girls you I have her, dated have to get taken no, no, no. Uh, It's okay. on your wedding day. Okay, okay, no, 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 it's on your wedding day. It's on your wedding day. That's why I don't. That's wife. why I don't want to know. You that's guys why are I don't right. Know I think men are maybe more we do, visual with it. We are like you, we could. Uh, we I go through like the whole it. process. We like to think of us as like pure little virgins that have never done anything else except, except you. with we us. We we want to blow loads and on women, your face. Right, but women kind of like that you're experienced. Patrick, I think it's different for a woman. It is. Um, okay, I'll share a quick story. Okay, there please. was a girl that I dated over the years, and who used to work in the uh, adult. Entertainment mm. field, yeah. In you what, know what, what uh, a di- position? A dinner theater, dancing. No. Oh, okay. And she re- related a story of uh, somebody that she was dating some wealthy gentleman or something like that. Mm. And there was there was a story of <laughs> like a dinner theater. Yeah, there was dinner theater. I think there was a buffet oh. involved. Um, but <laughs> there was there was there was talk of threesomes and there was talk of her being in a threesome with this person and evidently a transvestite in the room a la oh. like marv albert i didn't ask about it i didn't want to know that shit not after i heard it i really didn't want to know it so sometimes. i'm just like you know you know sometimes de- it all goes back to pet cemetery sometimes dead is better sometimes deaf is better yeah. I, I don't i don't i don't want to hear it pet cemetery uh, yeah. right, well let's all close our ears let's all uh, not think that anything happened before that's we right nope anybody. Like, when I met you guys, I was like, hey, I'm pretty sure these guys are pretty horrible people. (laughs) But fresh start. Yeah. I know them now. I don't care what they did in their past. Uh, Mikey, before we uh, close the subject out, uh, what's your take on it? Let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't want to know if your uh, future wife uh, got gang banged by, uh, got trained by... uh, I'm glad I know this. Now I can pretend with men that I'm, you know... A virgin every time, mm. and I know that's what you I don't know. There's so much shit on you, uh, on you on the internet. No, what happened? Come on. Well, I, I like to use, you know, you know, use instead of BC, instead of before Christ, use B in the first initial of whoever you're dating. And that, you know, that shit was B, blah, blah, blah. It don't matter. That's, a, that's Old Testament. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm not a religious man, but you know what you're, I am? Like, you're welcome. Use it yeah, freely. I'm glad. I'll yeah, yeah. This you're right? You feel you better about it? Yeah. yeah. Look, I'm not a religious man, but I am a gambling man. Mm. Oh, I love and I love to play games. Go to Vegas. I love right to now. bet, <laughs> and I also love to get uh, get my drink home. Yeah, and I also, <laughs> I also, also. Well, I like prostitutes, but uh, that's not part of what the subject matter. Who doesn't? They uh, need let's love play too. a little game called uh, "When and How Will They Die." I love this oh. game. Hit it, Mikey. Losers, this is the future. <laughs> the future, oh, you man. asshole. Oh, that asshole is going to play? Oh. Please, you're uh, lying that through that whole last uh, segment there. We all know what you're into. <laughs> all right, future. Shut I the fuck hate up, the all right? the future. Yeah, you don't die. Uh, so do I. <laughs> Nothing good can come from the future. <laughs> no. around on me. I He's so like mean that. to all me. Right, all right, all right. Speak the truth. All right, so, guys, this is the way we play this game. Uh, we're going to name a uh, personality, a celebrity of sorts, whatever, and then uh, the team here is going to have to determine how and when these motherfuckers died. Mm-hmm. And then we'll send it through a wormhole to the future. <laughs> oh. The future knows, obviously, uh, how these people actually died. And they'll let oh. us know if we're right or wrong. The future Sees is a all. grouchy place. It knows all. It's so yes. grouchy. It yes, yes, yes. But it's a fun game. We all enjoy it. So let's get started. Um, Chris, why don't we start with you? You okay. ready? Sure. Ready? Okay. Yeah, bring it. All right, uh, so uh, today's, uh, the game's first uh, celebrity that you're going to have to determine the answer to these questions is Hulk Hogan. Oh. So get your... I love it. All right. How did he die? How does he die? And when does he die, Chris? Come on, All right, so Chris, uh, Hulk Hogan. Okay. Let me tell you, brother. This is how this is how I think Hulk Hogan's gonna go down, brother. No. With all the roids and all the prayers and all the vitamins <laughs> and all the alleged cocaine. Let me tell you, brother. How old is Terry now? Like in his sixties. Uh, sixty. I think. Like sixty. He He's a good sixty, but all those, you know, he's had a great life. I just want to, you know, he's 
been a megastar for years. Well, if you watch the show, though, he's kind of manic. Well, he's oh, manic. No. Well, because that's from years of doing steroids and and uh, amphetamines of different well, sorts. There's, a, there's an up so, and a down to that story, um, you know. I say, I say, he's sixty, Patrick. Is he? Mm-hmm. He's sixty. He's 60. he's going down at seventy with uh, heart related cardiovascular mm. issues. That makes sense. Well, he's got about does. another ten years because he is in good shape, but his but his heart his heart is you know. You know, his ticker's gonna give. The bees are a really big 70. guy too. So, seventy. Um, yeah, I say seventy. I think that was a reasonable answer. I mean, he used I logic he, to determine. Yeah, I really think that that's better than my answer. I'm gonna go out at seventy, brother. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it kind of can. Well, well, Bethany, you can say all you want. Yeah. But you're not in the future. You that's don't true. Know. I don't know. You're not I, ten years from now. So uh, who knows? So um, all right, let's put it to the judges in the future. Mm. Yeah. Oh, technical difficulties tonight. <laughs> this has been in the future. <laughs> but you're wrong. Apparently, you're wrong, Chris. Screw you, future. Yep. Well, screw, screw no one you. likes the future. No, he's an asshole. And as Chris has mentioned in past podcasts, that's why he uh, puts uh, past photos of himself on, on Facebook. <laughs> it's the future. Yeah, surely. <laughs> Okay, no, Bethany, I need, I need it was attention. you all along. Bethany, you're up. Hulk Hogan, do you even know who he is? Yes, of course I know. How who would you he know is? who he is? Because I did a boyfriend that used to make me watch full WWE and professional wrestling all the time. Like about did, he, did this three guy times tell you? Week. This guy tell you stories about his past? Um, yeah. Uh, which one? Give me one. Give you stories about his past? Well, did he? What story did he tell you? I mean, it wasn't good. Like, no, no, no. He what? had no stories of the past. It Just a bunch of signed sad. black and, and white 8 by 10s on his wall? He loved to talk about, you know, sex all the time and how good it was. And we had ter- terrible sex. Mm. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. All right. How, 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 how the but Hulkster died? Re- he loved Long. wrestling. How the Hulkster died? Um, I think he dies. I think 70. God, that's a good answer. But I'm going to go with 75. But I, I think that he dies, you know, maybe heart failure, but by doing like one last, like, appearance, one last event. Oh, and he wow. fights someone. And someone, he's like the oldest fighter, and he dies by a chair. And he's, oh, a has, folding chair over oh. his yeah, back. Yeah, folding chair. And he has like all the tacks in his head, and he goes out just like in a blaze Wait, of wrestling. Wait, that was the glory. wrestler. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, that was the movie. The, I thought I re- no, that recognized. was the movie. The, the wrestler. <laughs> that's how yeah. the no, Mickey Rourke died. Right. I think and that that sounds good though. Yep. But you stole <laughs> the <laughs> ending. Really? T- the ending to I the wrestler. I've never even seen it. I ah, <laughs> uh, you're in SAG. <laughs> well, Chris, yeah. uh, call I, me out here. Um, I can't. I gotta pick up my phone. That's Darren Aronofsky. He would Do like to speak to Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's uh, good. Though, Darren. Right? Yeah. Did. Did she steal? Our audience's head. Darren, yeah. did she steal uh, the last scene of the wrestler <laughs> for her answer? I, I believe. I believe she. Pissed. I believe she did. And my I lawyers will be contacting her. In to me without me knowing. I don't know. It. I don't like know. Like in my sleep or something. Well, okay. Well, let's bring it to the future and uh, let's see what the answer is. Oh, Obviously, the audience so is I not with you. So I kind of stole some from Chris and then some from. Yeah. No. And it still wasn't right. Uh, next time you plan on stealing something, uh, uh, why don't you, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just focused on your breasts right now. Oh my god, future! Uh, future! <laughs> Jesus Christ. I will warn you once. <laughs> I will not. I will not. <laughs> I will not allow this again. God, get out of here. She's an employee of the Dude Show Network. Yeah. Asshole. I'm All right, I'm going to trust a team member. around here. All right, Sheesh. fine. You were wrong. It's in my new contract. You were wrong. But I, All right, let, let me give it a shot. Let me give it a shot. All right. Hulk Hogan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. Can, can you play he the music? such a good Hulk. This is how this motherfucker goes down. This is how, this is how it goes down. <laughs> this man has been doing uh, steroids, Allegedly. which is dangerous. Yes, but he's also been getting spray tans. <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> for the better Maybe. part of thirty years. <laughs> At some point, it's that okay. spray tan lotion, whatever that's fucking made out of, coconuts or whatever. Yeah, coconuts. That's <laughs> that seems into his brain, hits the frontal lobe area. That's oh. the part of your brain that I don't even know this that uh, is in charge of reason. 
Yeah. So one night, he gets spray tanned, and it's 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 it. He uh, yeah. wakes up in the middle of the night and he uh, wants to have sex, and he walks into his daughter's room. It's oh, no, come on, no. guys! Wow, it's my answer. You're going in. He goes to sleep. This, with, is, your, this is your truth. Okay. Goes, okay. goes to sleep with Brooke, his daughter. Ooh. But. Allegedly. It's, she's not sleeping in there. He picks the yeah. wrong bedroom. It's Big John Studd, a former champion of the <laughs> WWF. And <laughs> he can't tell the difference. No, no. He slips his meat thermometer in Big John Studd's asshole. Wow, this is very in-depth. Big John Studd wakes up while Hulk Hogan is <laughs> pounding away. No! Rips his fucking cock off. Ah. Hulk Hogan's bleeding all over the room. Oh, my ah. God. Bloody stump. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My mom can Big John Stud <laughs> chokes him to death, <laughs> buries him in the ground. It's never spoken of again. Yeah. That's how he dies. I feel nauseous now. Hulk Hogan dies as a result of penis bleeding as his <laughs> cock is ripped off by Big John Stud, former WWF uh, champion, and uh, he bleeds out at the age of 62. Wow! Because that's, actually, although the autopsy sad. says that it was actually. Uh, Spray tan poisoning, but um, they didn't put the. But we dick. all know it was, it was really a Big John Stud. It was really yeah, a, ter- they, a, yep. a terrible cock accident. So let's <laughs> put it to the future and see if that is in fact true. Oh. Cock bleeding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, you think you're so fucking funny? Do you spend four hours in your uh, studio apartment with that smelly fucking dog? Right, that? Um, my dog is <gasps> does not smell. Future. He knows a lot about you. <laughs> Well, he's from the future, Bethany. <laughs> so, of course, he does. All right. Um, let's move on to the next uh, mm. next celebrity. All right. Next celebrity is the band Bon Jovi. Okay? The whole band. The entire band. Right. How do they die and when do they die? Oh, this is one of my favorite songs, man. Great song. Love this song. Great I used song. To, I know how to play this on the guitar. I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 12 string. Yeah, you do. 12 string. Yeah. All right, uh, Chris started last round, uh, Bethany. So yeah. it's uh, your turn to uh, be on the chopping block. Gosh, every time I think about this, I, I feel like such a terrible person. But mm-hmm. I think that they're, uh, they have a, a show coming up at Staples Center. Does anyone know exactly when that is? No. It's coming up pretty I'm sure soon. they'll let us know on uh, it's, the it's, CM, CMT channel. Yep. Because <laughs> that country now, apparently. It's been on the radio a little bit. But I think that they're all going to go in and get, like, group facelifts together just to feel fresh mm. for their show. You know, they're taking L.A. over right now. Just they want to feel fresh. And I think that it's a, you know, I think the doctor wants to kill them. Secretly, Doctor Kavorkian. Yeah, no. <laughs> now I'm self-conscious that I'm going to steal it from something. No. Um, and then he, they bleed out because of their facelifts. They, bl- all of them. It's bad. Simul- yeah, he, the, the, the plastic surgeon hates them. Bon Jovi, all of them. I, I think Bethany's on to something. Do you, can we find another Bon Jovi song? Because their music is amazing. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, look, they have had. Some amazing hits. They may live forever. They, they have. If I ever get married, I'm going to play that full catalog throughout the <laughs> ceremony. Yeah. For me. While you're walking down It doesn't down get aisle. any better. Right. Than some Bon Jovi. Really? So, okay. So, Bethany's answer is, they're playing a big show. It's sad, yeah. They w- when look, when they are they going to die, fresh. Bethany? Well, their show's next week coming or? up. Yeah, it's going to be pretty soon. I'd say a week before the next show, which who the fuck knows when that All right, is. So they fly in to get their faces done. Yeah, together. As like, like Kanye West's like, mother. It, they're like uniting the group together with a fresh facelift. Okay, okay. So let's put it to the judges and uh, see how that goes. Um, future, does Bon Jovi die with their faces bleeding out from uh, bad face work uh, from Dr. Kevorkian uh, <laughs> next week? No, uh, can't play two things at once, huh? Can't do it. Can't do it. Hey, Mike, I want to let you know how you're going to die. <laughs> future. Are you, do you have a cold future? <laughs> yes. The batteries are running out on, uh, yes. Uh, but, Mike, you're going to die alone, asshole. So, anyway, Chris, you're up next, loser. Chris, how, how, how does Bon Jovi die? 
Um, first, I'd like to say, future, go fuck yourself. I yeah. agree. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I am right there with you. Okay, I don't need a song. Um, I have a scenario for you. Mm-hmm. This, it's like it's like a Wes Craven directed movie. Oh, wow. This oh, horror movie shit. because the whole band is gonna die, and this is what, and this is yeah. what happens. Um, they're gonna be in a in a city someplace where it rains, and lightning is gonna hit the old hairpiece mm-hmm. of the <laughs> keyboard player, David Bryant. <laughs> And basically, it's going to oh, yeah. bring his old hair extensions to life. Mm. And Beautiful. they're angry. Oh. And they're mad that they're not in use anymore. Oh, yeah. And basically, they changed, they changed, you know, they changed the image. They did the whole thing. This is a and, drama. That, and, th- and those fucking extensions are pissed. The, the extensions it, are mad. They, the extensions are mad. They've been brought to life by possibly lightning or the devil. Probably and, the devil. Oh, and man. every 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 city and every four seasons that they stay in, <laughs> that that hair piece this is, is going to go story. around and it's going to smother each member <laughs> through the mouth cuz they probably all you know have uh, all wearing like snore guards at this point and their mouths are open while they're sleeping like old men like <laughs> oh my god and they're going to this is a movie and that and that hair piece is going to choke the whole band one person at a time it's going to choke them to death i think you're right death by david bryan's old hair extensions that's how the band is going to die I think you're right. That was amazing. I don't know. Oh my oh, God, Chris! You Future? Know what? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, you used to have long hair too, and you're losing your hair as well. <laughs> Maybe you'll die by choking that, but actually, I know you will. But there's, you know, I don't wanna. I'm drinking right now, so I'll check it later. <laughs> I really hope the future can talk through that megaphone out of his asshole because it's going to get shoved up there. I agree. I agree. All right, so Chris, you were right, but I should be allowed how an answer of how I think that maybe they... You didn't answer yet? N- oh. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, so let me give it a quick answer. Right, get quick, please. Or a theory. Here's my theory. Obviously, quick, we know how they will die, but I want to give my theory. The CIA has a lot of smart people working for them. True. Oh, yeah. Like a bunch of, you know, mathematicians and algorithms. They, they study algorithms. and Smart st- people. <laughs> algorithms. <laughs> algorithms. Smart people. Yeah, a bunch of, you know, do you ever see Beautiful Mind? I'm smart. Oh, like yeah. the, pl- the, the part so that Russell uh, Crowe plays. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so they actually find <laughs> that the Middle East started hating us at some point in the 80s where they wanted to, like, come over here and start blowing shit up. or And they... The algorithm things that they did for the CIA, they found that the Middle East started ha- hating us simultaneously at the start of that band. Oh. Mm-hmm. Time cop. No. <laughs> no. No, no. Much, no much better. And so the CIA realizes that Bon Jovi has been around for 30 years, but started in 1983. I don't know if anybody knew that. I do. And oh. so did uh, a lot of terrorist plots that year. So what the CIA comes up with mm-hmm. is that uh, in order to end terrorism, they need to load their tour bus with some C4. Okay? Right before one of the biggest shows on the planet Earth in a year from now. Not that staple no. uh, show. The next one. They fucking load it up. They accidentally kill Justin Bieber. He's on the same bill. Too. Oops. But he, th- that's how they die. All right, but that uh, that theory obviously <laughs> we know it's not right. Didn't work out. No, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't work out. It didn't, okay. it didn't. Uh, yeah, go ahead, future. <laughs> Hit the buzzer, you, you fucking asshole. Hit that goddamn buzzer. I want to hear it. Do it. Hit. It's I dare right you. Things. Hit that fucking buzzer. I Hit mean, it right now. What you just said is one of the most insanely <laughs> idiotic things I have ever heard. Sometimes. All right. Fine. Well, <laughs> next round. Next, next round. <laughs> Dane Cook, another man who's not funny. Oh God. Chris, you're up. Okay, I'll Dane make Cook. it. He's uh, forty-one. Uh, right. Okay, I'll make it quick because I don't really want to spend any more than five seconds on Dane Cook. Um, yeah. Um, well, like like cockroaches and Keith Richards, he's never gonna die. That's my answer. He's he's gonna be here to annoy us for Please years no. and years and years to come. Please no. Final answer. That's it. That's Boom. all I have to say. He's oh, out. He's quick, out. Uh, yeah. I something tells me that he might be right, but kind of half right. When we um, even if he is, he's wrong. Let's hear it from the future. Um, all right, fine. You're wrong, but uh, <laughs> I think you're right. Kinda. I Thank think my soul. In a way, you're right. Okay. 
Uh, I guess the future was bored with Dane Cook. You know, here, Dane Cook was here. He was going to tell some jokes. He has no The future said, I ain't yeah. showing up for that shit. Well, maybe All the right. future is Dane Cook then because mm. he lives forever. And he's mm. also not funny. That's true. All right. The Bethany, what, uh, what do you got to say? Okay, so my first encounter with Dane Cook was at the Laugh Factory. Oh, and we personal would go, story. We I'm would sorry. Go to, we would go, I know, we would go to the Laugh Factory, and he'd be like the secret guest oh, every yeah, time. And we were like, oh, God, I hope it's not Dane Cook. Please, no. And so he just kept coming out. And one time, a, a really nice gentleman at the end of Dane Cook's set stood up on the stage and proposed to his girlfriend. And Dane Cook was standing between them, and he takes the girl and shoves his tongue down her whole entire throat before she can say yes to the man that proposed to her. And then she said yes, and everyone just sat there really awkward, like he was the worst human being in the whole world. Wait a minute, people didn't cheer to that. No. That, That she said yes, Yes, oh, they but it everyone up. feel like, like the guy was about to punch Dane Cook in the face. Oh. Like, and I think he should have. And I think he's going to pull that stunt again. And another man is going to be up there mm-hmm. and murder him for shit like that. And uh. I hope it happens in front of a whole crowd at the Laugh Factory. Oh, OK. So you're saying that in the future. He's going to do it again. A second time. Maybe someone's going to ask someone to get does. married. And Dane yeah. Cook is going to. Stick his tongue down. Down her throat. The female's throat. Down and then, the female. And how's he kill throat. him? Oh, I think he has a knife. Oh, a knife? Yeah, okay. I think and it's on him. W- what, uh, when's, it, how old? How old? I think, it may, I th- I'm going to go with, how old's he right now? 42? 41. 41. I'm going to say another 10 years on him. 52. Oh, 51. He's going to be He's past gonna his years. He's going to pull it again, shove his tongue down her throat. Even unfunnier. Get knifed. At the Laugh Factory as a secret guest. A knife. Okay, well, let's, well, you know what? That seems like a pretty good answer. Let's uh, that take could it to happen. the future. And, oh. I never win, future. Um, take that peroxide that you uh, dye your hair with skin in your brain there, sweetheart. <laughs> um, all right, really I don't rude. want to ever hear from the goddamn future again. I know, that's You so know what I mean? mean. I, I, don't, I think we're going to, though, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I have an answer for how Dane Cook dies. Bring it. And I'm pretty sure this is going to help me take the win for tonight. You know? Because mm-hmm. right. I always win. That's true. <laughs> that's it. I the wonder games, why. The game's rigged. Uh, okay, no. fine, assholes. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. That yeah, oh, was, oh, I, oh, was that, was right, that you or the future, future? Patrick? Future? Yeah. All right. Future? Hold on, hold on. Fine, fellow. Well, you just seemed like co-hosts. you guys were, you know, being a little negative about the game, and I was trying to put you in check. All right, this is how uh, Dane Cook dies. Okay. Dane Cook, at some time in the near future, uh, makes the mistake of actually telling a joke that's funny. Oh. Don't do it. He he tells a joke that's funny. Now, <laughs> what he didn't realize. What? What he didn't realize is when he told this joke, <laughs> it awoke in Satan. In- Satan heard the joke. Satan was jarred from a sleep. He'd remembered that 20 years earlier, Dane Cook made a deal with him. Sleepy Satan. Saying, if I make you a famous comedian, I get your soul. But since Dane Cook hasn't been funny for 20 years, Satan forgot about that deal. Right. right. But that joke reminded him of it. So Satan wakes up and he goes, hey, uh, it's now time to come get your soul. And uh, But ironically... He'd made the same deal with Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> you remember that fucking hack? And uh, Yakov Smirnov presents Satan with a deal. He says, hey, look, I know you. I made a deal with you. My soul, I'm not funny either. And so what can I do? And Satan says, kill Dane Cook. So Yakov Smirnov, to kind of put a thing with fire, lights a fart on fire with a uh, one of those, uh, what do you call that, a flamethrower? <laughs> Burns oh. Dane Cook to death with a fart in a sauna from a fart. In a sauna. Yeah, in a sauna. Kills him, and that's how Dane Cook goes down. Age of 40, uh, 46. Uh, Flamethrower <laughs> from a fart. That seems. Uh, by Yakov Smirnov from Satan. See how that goes okay. down with uh, the future. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh. oh, thanks. I thought, I thought we weren't going to hear from him anymore. Yeah, wow. Well, well I, I, I did not want to hear from him anymore. He but seems uh, to favor you. I don't was, know why. Yeah, um, it was pretty nice. I saw you at college, Patrick, sucking cock from that fucking, uh, you know, that marginally good-looking guy. Hey, 
I never suck cock in college, dude. I saw it. All right, fuck that. Let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you know, uh, I never suck cock in college. <laughs> just so you know. Just That's not what the future we, said. Hey, <laughs> one more time. He's from the future. <laughs> let's roll the tape. All right, yeah. fine. Uh, let's hit the news there, sweetheart. Can you believe the goddamn future? I know. Me it's time cock? for the Dude Show News Show. <sighs> Prepare to be no, informed. No. Because our news today. girl is down for almost anything. Okay. Now, I can't. Now let's give it over to Bethany. Now. God, I love this. Now, Mark. Bethany, bef- I don't want to stop you in your, but we have D-Rock in the house. Can you come in? Well, I was going to ask D-Rock if he was going to come over and be in the news. D-Rock, I see D-Rock, you over there. Please, uh, D-Rock, please. I see you. I know you want to come join this party, this news party. All right, so D-Rock, good to have you here, buddy. Hey, we are going to punch up the uh, Dude's Channel Surfing series coming soon. We I, just, c- I can't wait. All right, D-Rock, tell the audience a little bit about what the, what the show is. Well, it's it's basically just about Mick Ritchie and I sitting back watching TV, which is nothing new. No. Except for the fact that um, that Jonathan, the fucked up sock puppet, is there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has a little bit of a drug problem, but we don't mind. I like Jonathan as much as I like the future. So it's a good show. Oh, no. So people should tune in and uh, share share the video when it comes up October 1st. I mean, uh, November 1st. Share it with everybody. Please, we need your help. We can't do this alone. All right, so Bethany, what's in the news, baby doll? Okay, so you guys know how much I value honesty. Well, apparently it- not. You <laughs> said that earlier that you We're didn't want to hear. Now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in Billings, you are Montana. Smelly pirate hooker. Wow. Okay, Mikey. Is that the future? <sighs> They're all mean. They are. Okay. In Billings, Montana, a 55-year-old woman named Carol Frances Omra drowned or drowned her sorrows in a pint of liquor, drove home from work, parked in her driveway, and then called the cops saying that she needed assistance getting out of her vehicle. When asked if she was experiencing medical issues, she allegedly explained, no, I'm just too damn drunk. <laughs> she told officers that... She had a small pint of vodka right before driving home, and after taking a breathalyzer test, she blew almost four times the legal limit. She was promptly arrested and later charged on DUI, totaling three DUIs for this very honest drunk. In her own driveway? Yeah, in her driveway. Uh, She was almost there. I mean, she drove all the way home, but she couldn't get out. It had hit her at that point. Four times the legal limit is what, 0.32? Yeah, 0.311. But you guys are missing this third DUI. I don't think they all happened in her driveway. You know what I mean? No. No, they definitely didn't. She was drinking an entire pint, getting in the car, trying to get home before it hit so she could just (laughs) crash out on the couch. But it hit a little too fast while she was still in the car and then she couldn't move. I like that she had a small pint. Yeah, a small pint. That's what it said. Not a small pint. Not the regular pint. It was just a small... Like, they're all the same size. They're a pint. I think the bigger question is here, uh, what what has driven her to uh, hit the bottle that much? You know what I mean? She's sad. If you're in uh, three uh, three DUIs, you're three DUIs deep, I think there's some uh, some problems. She's sad. I don't want to know. Come on, Chris. I, I don't want to know. Ever date a chick with uh, three uh, DUIs? Um, I know D Rock. N- not, not, <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm aware. Of. I was her ride. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. You were the star of that movie, My Chauffeur. <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. Jesus Christ! Come on. Uh, I've dated a girl that had two DUIs, and she was fucked up. Yeah. She's a fucked up person. Yeah. yeah. Great in bed. I bet. Oh, the yeah. crazy girls. She they make a... bad decisions. Oh yeah. Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. She was a tigress. I Usually I'm that. one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, D Rock. Me too. Usually yeah. when it's a really good night, I usually find out they have warrants or something. So um Bethany, you uh ever go home with a guy drinking? He's obviously not capable of driving. It's very dangerous. And he's driven? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's LA. It's hard. Well, man. you're alive, so everything. Yeah, thank out okay, God. But, um, all right, so uh, so she's gonna go to jail for a long time. Yeah, three DUIs. It's not. It's not gonna go well. Well, they put you in the pokey for like two years. The pokey, yeah. <laughs> they do. In the pokey. You do three DUIs. You go yeah. into the joint, like you're the kid said in Bad News it's Bears. It's not good. Yeah. No, I had a joint. friend that had two. On his second DUI, he ran into the side of a church, which I think is like. An omen for no, it's that's probably okay. time to get it it's together. It's a sign from God. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, let's go around the room. I have no DUIs. 
Uh, you just call, trying to call people out because you know everyone in this room. I've got no DUIs. Oh. All right. And Maybe Derek, and by the way, he's a colossal fuck up. I know him. Absolutely. So. And you have no? No, because I always uh, just leave my car and take a cab. Yeah, there that's you go. That's so very responsible. responsible. Bethany, I like no you better for that. No DUIs for you. No right? way. No. You did admit it. I, b- I don't even you. have a speeding ticket. Chris, I know you don't. What Zero. Zero. <laughs> Zero. Okay. <laughs> all right. Fine. All right. Uh, all right. Wow. Well, that's. I'm really proud of us. No DUIs. Yeah. No. No. For, for LA, at least that we're admitting. I am a mess in every ever <laughs> uh, other aspect of my life, but yeah. not that. All right. What What else we got, baby girl? Okay. So a high school Spanish teacher became the center of controversy last week when a parent complained to the school board about her nude modeling past. According to the Dallas Observer, Christy Nicole DeWeiss was then fired from her position at the school. The 21-year-old teacher had posed in a simulated lesbian scene for Play- Playboy only two years ago. The parents complained that her past distracted children from learning because they were using their phones to view photos of her while on campus. <laughs> Christy states that she's fine and on to interviewing for new jobs. She tweeted that her only qual- qualm with the situation was that she was really missing her kids. All right, fine. You I know, see you a picture know of her she's right interviewing? Now. She's interviewing hey, at fucking Popeyes and Wiener Schnitzel. I want to see a picture of this chick before we move on with this. Okay. Uh, I think the bigger problem is is that the parents are the problem here because their kids are at school doing what? Looking up pictures of Playboy in class. Yeah, you know some dad uh, found that. On, That's come really on. where Seven it comes. Seven-year-old wasn't looking this up. It was some fu- yeah, it was some creepy fucking dad. She's cute. Absolutely. She's like a Beating little. Off to it. She's a little brunette. She's I mean, in she's Playboy. Only, I'm sure she was cute. She's only 21, so it was yeah. just like I mean that's barely older than your seniors and some of those Old seniors are like 18. To know Guys, <laughs> I think we're in a, a weird place in time right now. At some point, we're all going to have shit on us, man. Oh, you all mm-hmm. video. You know what I mean? You, uh, you've, had, you've had actual shit on you. I think we should oh congratulate God. her. <laughs> yes, I have. Okay, so you can kind of see her there. You Chris. can see her body. There's her face. <laughs> you sick fuck. I think we should congratulate her because she put her clothes on, got her degree, and she's teaching oh. school. Yeah. All right, so this chick's hot. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. I, it doesn't she's go any further. You can't really see it. We she's can hot. Mike, like, you want to see what, she, what she looks like? Hold yeah. on. You can see like half her face. What? We'll pull up her porn later. All right, so um, we're all going to have porns uh, in the future. And so I don't think this any. I think uh, she took it really well. About. I think that she didn't make a huge deal of it. She was like, I made the decisions that I made. So, you know, whatever. I'll just look for another job. Oh, there you go. Right? Me an airline stewardess or something? I can't believe I'm on her side with that. Okay. Well, no, I'm on her. I, I'm yeah, on totally. her side. I'd marry she, her. She did a good good job. I'd be on her back, on her front, on her side, whatever. There you go, D-Rock. That's why I pull you. Okay. Hey, by the way, she's 14, you sick fuck. No, she's not. 21. Right. What's 21, next? I heard Okay, it. God, the 14. Okay, in New Hampshire, a gas station clerk was fired for warding off an attempted robber by pulling out a handgun. The clerk, Shannon Bear Cothran, told the police that a man approached him with a knife, and then he promptly fled when he pull out, pulled out the gun. When the clerk filed the report with the company he worked for, they fired him only hours later for going against company policy and using a weapon at the workplace. Mm. The store manager and district manager both lobbied against the decision to no avail. The company stated that though they care about pol- employees' safety, such as Mr. Cothran, um, they do not believe that employees should have firearms at the workplace. Well, I agree with that. And I also agree with uh, just uh, let them steal and... Uh you know, who gives a fuck? Right? What know, state like, was that in? Does it say? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Oh, yeah, it's cold there. And his middle yeah. name is Bear. Like, I feel really bad for him. He, they said that he worked there for a really long time, and, like, that was his gig, man. He was, like, protecting his store. Well, how do you feel about, uh, like, Bethany, would you uh, or pull out a firearm to pr- I mean, protect I can't, a store? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can shoot guns. I'm really good at it, actually. Mm. If I was a guy with the name Shannon, I'd think I'd carry a gun, too. Shannon Bear. Well, He's like a big grizzly guy. I'll, I'll give you a personal story. As a kid, I worked at an amusement park, and they made a sign, this thing that said, if anybody he- held you up at the gunpoint at the cotton candy machine, just give them the money. And I remember at uh, the age of 12 going, no shit. <laughs> right. No shit. Yeah. Really? I, no, no. You, you, you didn't want me to jump over the counter and strangle this <laughs> motherfucker? Oh, because that's what I thought I would should do as right. a loyal employee of making two dollars and fifty cents an hour. You fucking asshole! Yeah, did you work? Your at, money. Did you work at Riverside? I, no, no, I, I grew up in Massachusetts. Yeah, like, no, the yeah, Riverside was the park called uh, Whalen Park, oh, making I, cotton candy. I don't know where the fuck no. that is. It's by the way, cotton candy, just sugar, heated, yeah, yep, spun, spun around, yeah, it's delicious. All right, there you go, there yeah. you go. Uh, anything else to add to this, Mike? You want to contribute or? 
What do you, what do you have to say? Pictures. Oh, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Is that her? All right, uh, let's. Oh my God, this teacher. She did a little more than. Uh, oh, than you're, uh, oh, you're pulling up like the sexy ones. Oh my. Oh. All right, what else you got, baby girl? If you're a car loving man, you may relate to 63 year old cars. Edward Smith. He's had the. A love life that has been in overdrive for the last 45 years. This man claims to have had over a thousand sexual partners, mm. but only one of them was an actual human. He is a mm. mechophilia, the term used oh, for someone yeah. who is sexually attracted to planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh. oh, and he also had a quickie with a helicopter used in the TV series Airwolf. Oh, I love that show. <laughs> According that to whore. Smith, some guys look at boobs and bums on beautiful women. I look at front and rear ends of a beautiful car. Now Smith. That was that guy. He just nailed that car. Yeah. But now he's fully committed to Vanilla, his 30-year-old Volkswagen Beetle, though sometimes he has a fling with a 1973 Opel GT named Cinnamon. His porn is Knight Rider. Yeah. (laughs) He says over 500 other men have this same fetish, he believes. Okay, I saw a show on this. You did? Uh, It was like on the Lifetime Network. It was this fat lesbian. Uh, she liked cars? No, no, no. Church benches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Uh, she walked up that to it. In the hot. episode, it's really creepy. <gasps> She's like, oh. I've been, uh, there you go. Yeah, put some sexy music on. Yeah. This chick looked like Rosie O'Donnell. No. So it's not that. Yeah, it wasn't that sexy. Regular or from Exit to Eden? Yeah, because. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, they're both the same thing. God. This search, like, <laughs> Hello, pew. A pew is the this bench. Is we know what a pew is. Keep yeah. going, buddy. Okay. In a church. Not Got that it? thing that comes out of Spot's ass. Right. Oh, I'll get back to you later, pew. But I got this uh, railing set over here, right before the where the people eat the bread. No. How are you? It's the bottom. I've been uh, looking at you no. for some time now. While I'm putting that uh, <laughs> seventy-five cents in the basket. <laughs> I want you offering. No, that's really take me. No, all right. So that's real. She <laughs> yeah, really yeah. did that. Yeah, it's a thing. You uh, make love to bridges and shit. That's a real. <laughs> yeah, show. well, his his what? Yeah, his is just like you know things with the engines he likes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's cool. This guy's totally normal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? He says he says that. Uh, D Rock, what about you? You ever uh, make love to a uh, I don't know uh, um, uh, like a cement. When when I was a kid, my couch was my bitch. Oh yeah, the couch always. Oh no 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 no. I used to. Oh fuck. sorry. No I, no couch cushions. Yeah. Hey, yeah. actually, when I was a teenager, one time we this poor bastard he uh, had to quit <laughs> school. We uh, this I think his name was Woody. That's uh, appropriate. We, we snuck up to his house one day to actually rob his house, and we looked in his uh, window and we saw him fucking two uh, couch cushions. <laughs> no. Pounding away. No. You're Pounding my, away. You're my no. lover. And you're my fort. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, when you're like 10, you just have these ridiculous boners. No, he was just, 15. Just, oh, he, yeah. He was 15. He, and he, the, the, love that he, <laughs> the love that he made to that, that couch. Anyway, he, it was never the same because on Monday morning, he, his life was ruined. Yeah, you told We'd everyone. We'd all seen it. He, he fucked a two couch, <laughs> couch cushion. And then his whole family has to sit on the couch. So just, maybe you're right, Bethany. With this story, it's like it's across the board. We all yeah, like to everyone make you love know, to, has sex with you know, things sometimes. I make love to my hand all day. Yeah, okay. But it's got uh, blood flowing through it. So it's not a. I don't yeah, think there's. I, I don't give this guy any fault at all. I no. think he's. Uh, Look, you I, a car, love what you love. Oh really? Yeah, D. I saw you uh, eyeing out the air conditioning unit in my apartment. <laughs> that's <laughs> a that's a brand new air conditioner. You if you unplug it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all, me right, so me. That, all right. All right. Let's yeah. wrap it up, B. Let's yeah. wrap it up, uh, Mikey. Uh, that, hey, look. I think we all learned a lot today. I'm Bethany. That's your news, and I'm not the town whore. No, you're not. No, you're not. Well, you would be a whore if you wanted to make uh, love to that uh, 75 inch TV behind you. You know what I mean? Not if I was just making love to that TV exclusively. No? You got eyes for that TV? All yeah, right. it's kind of nice. All right, so hey, we enjoy doing this. We love talking. And if it was just us sitting in a room here doing it for nobody, it wouldn't be worth it. So we need you to share this with a friend. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe you weren't into the show tonight. Maybe we failed you, but 
Maybe some of you think we succeeded. Why you always gotta go? Why you always gotta go to negative? Look, because maybe I'm it was neg- good. I've been hanging out with Mikey. Mikey's a very negative. <laughs> That's guy. true. That's true. Right. So anyway, sucky, good. so peeps, share it with a friend. That's the only way we're gonna keep doing it. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention?